Hello everyone, my name is Sala Katic and I'm a software developer at Vivify Ideas. Today let's talk about RxJS which is currently the most popular JavaScript library and for a good reason. Ok, so let's try to explore this interesting library by looking at some of the differences between its core concepts and the promises that we explored last week. You can actually check the documentation to see various examples of how you can create observable like from event or array to name a few. The main concepts to understand when using RxJS are observable which is a stream of data and observer which is listening and I should say subscribing to value change in this observable stream. Let's make an observable from scratch to see what's going on. We can import observable from RxJS as we are going to need it and let's make an observer object that is going to implement three possible functions that he can receive from the observable and let's console log the result in each to see what's going on Okay, uh, and let's let's make a new observable. Uh, we are going to use observable dot create, and we can pass in an observer, and let's just call next here. Okay, and we have to subscribe to this observable that we have just made and we can pass in our object okay and I should add rxjs here okay and let's see the output of the console we can see that the value that we have passed to the next was printed. Uh, you should be careful when subscribing to observables to pick a time when to unsubscribe so you avoid memory leaks. Uh, that is something that you should always keep in mind. Okay, uh, we can note two important differences compared to promises here. Uh, observables don't have to be asynchronous, so they can follow the same executing order that we are used to from other languages and this is actually an example of such observable where we could have uh, wrapped this around in some uh, asynchronous function or ajax call uh, so it would return a value asynchronously and also we can see that as long as complete or error is not used, we can return as many uh, values here as we, as we want to. Uh, whereas with promises, they can resolve to only one value. The other difference that gets most of the beginners is that promises are eager and observables are lazy. Uh, let's see what that actually means. Uh, Let's say we made here a get product promise that took in a resolve argument and let's console log when this callback is executed. Uh, we can resolve to, to a, some random string. Okay. Uh, we can console log here before the actual call uh, and let's let's attach a then to this uh, to this uh, promise and console log after resolving so we can see the order of executing we can actually see that the callback is what is executed immediately without the need to attach then to it which is why we say promises are eager uh, but this is not the case with observables, so let's rewrite this. 
let's say we had a new observable that took in a observer as an argument and did the same console log here. Uh, we can also fetch the same string and let's complete our observable here. Okay, uh, we can do the same before actual call console log and let's subscribe to this observable and we can pass in a observer object with uh, console log as a next handler and for complete we can make a anonymous function that is going to console log the end. Okay, and we can see from the console that callback is executed after we subscribe to our observable and start listening to it, which is why we say observables are lazy. Okay, and so we mentioned observables are streams of data. Uh, with RxJS, you can apply operators to an observable to get a new tailored stream. Let's see this in action with a simple map operator that behaves just like the one for arrays. We are going to import here a map from RxJS operators. Uh, and we can make a new observable that is going to in set interval uh, return a hmm, let's return notified message here and let's do that every two seconds okay and we can make a new tailored stream as I have mentioned here that is going to take notifications that we receive and going to map each one of them to a new notification containing the same the same message and let's append a new new date here so we know the exact time of this notification okay and we can subscribe to our newly created observable and pass in a console log as a handler we can see here that uh, the notifications are logged with the date and time of each notification. I hope this helped you understand the synchronous JavaScript nature even further. Thank you for your time and I hope to see you in the next one.